Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the headquarters temple. I be grateful for being here. <clears throat> Greetings, everyone. Welcome again. This is First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, where the leader, teacher, and guide is Apostle Pastor Gino Jennings. Truly want to give God thanks for all that he's continued to do for me and my family's life. I made it another day to be in the land of the living. I want to give double honor to the former prophets and apostles of old, double honor to our current day leader, teacher, and guide, Apostle Pastor Gino Jennings, giving God thanks for the faithful ministering brethren who labor in the vineyard of holiness with the man of God, and of course, giving thanks for the different auxiliaries and the cooperation that they instill. <coughs> um, <coughs> praise and testimony is going to begin before we get in it, I just wanted to give a, a short testimony from myself. Uh, we were making our way up here from Canada, uh, just like every other convocation. And uh, we were 36 minutes away from Philly. And then, you know, I heard like a big boom, boom in the car. Stop it, pull it over on the highway, and I'm looking under. I don't see nothing. So we pull out and uh, somewhere like Norristown, like Plymouth meeting, something like that. And we get to the first mechanic. He's looking and he says, oh, looks like some rust. You're good to go. But he didn't look confident. So we went to a second mechanic down the street and he got his technician, took a flashlight and everything and started looking and looking. He said, we found a problem. He said, your, your, dry shaft, your drive shaft is broke. He said, good thing that you stopped because if you kept on driving, it would have kept hitting the gas tank. And if it would have hit the gas tank, it would have caused a leak, which would eventually have caused a spark. And the car could have just got on fire. So I give God thanks because it, 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 I, give God, I give God thanks for, you know, being humble enough to stop, you know, because I'm born in Canada, but sometimes I have that island hardheadedness in me. So I could have just kept going and take the risk. But I give God thanks because it could have been a lot worse. And brothers and sisters, as I was here, you know, I was discouraged. You know, I'm just like, what's going on, God? How is this happening to me? Because when you convert the USD to CAD... It's a whole other story, and the, the cost of it, it came to over 2,000-something CAD to fix it. But despite me being discouraged, it's like the messages, it just kept on hitting me from left and right, from Thursday, from Friday, and of course that message yesterday, Saturday, and I'm waiting for the message today, Sunday. And I give God thanks because even though you're coming and problems were there, there's a perfect peace that only God can give, because I wasn't worried. Because I know God has got me. And we're still here, still in the land of the living. And still, we're going to be able to make it back home safe and sound because they did fix the car good. So keep me and my family in prayer, brothers and sisters, as I do the same for you. Before we get into the praise and testimony, just to repeat, it's a gray van, Texas plate, 8B7851E. If you do not remove your car by 1 o'clock, 1 p.m., the car will be gone. I repeat, it's a gray van, license plate 8B7851E. If you do not remove your car by 1 p.m. in front of the house, it will be gone. Now, this is the part of praise and testimony. If you have a song to sing after you're chosen, start singing as it's going to help the mic brothers know whether to bring you a mic. If you're going to testify... Testify unto the goodness of God. This is to give God the glory and to give him the praise. Consider the others around you so that way, you know, you're not taking five to ten minutes or 15 minutes for your testimony. I don't want to have to cut anyone off. So please, get up, uh, give reverence, testify, sit down. Get up, sing to the glory of God, move, move, sit down. All right? 
So now if you want to testify or sing, you can please stand. me and my daughter been telling me I've been telling Elijah I took me far to three minutes to hear it I couldn't understand it but I said Lord what can I do she said you ought to take it to the doctor and have a hearing aid and I said all right but the man the pastor had to pray for me yesterday and he said he nodded my head first, then he nodded my ear. He said, you will never have to have a hearing aid no more in your life. And I've been listening real low down from 43 down to 11. And I'm so happy now that I can hear just as good as you. Pray my strength to the Lord. Because I have the Holy Ghost baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Running for my life, thanking you for your prayers, how you hold me on down through the years with my son, Pastor Dennis. Please continue to pray for me. Each and every day is wonderful to sing his praises all 
along the way is wonderful to really serve him your every need help me it's wonderful to trust in jesus he's mighty sweet let us walk with jesus each and every day talk with jesus all along the way trust in jesus he'll make your joys complete wonderful 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 he's mighty sweet let us walk with jesus each and every day talk with jesus all along the way trust in jesus he'll make your joys complete wonderful 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 he's mighty sweet you know that our time is short very soon the Lord he will return will you be punished or get your reward there'll be no more time To make it right when the Lord shall crack the sky. So keep your hand in his hand and be ready. Brothers and sisters. Greetings. I want to give the highest honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
and I want to honor the private and There's kids in the back. They're going to do the last. to be in your presence. Oh, my God, fill me with your spirit. Father, I'm hungry for you. I'm waiting, Lord. I need you to fill me with your spirit. Wherever I'm lacking, Lord, Help me to come up to your word so I can reach where I need to be to be filled with you. I want to be filled with you, oh God. I want to be filled with you, my king, my king. I want to be filled with you. From my head to my toe, I want to be filled with you until I overflow. Oh, my God, to you be all the glory. 
Oh my God, there is no one like you. Oh my God, I long to be in your presence. Oh my God, fill me with your spirit. Ascribing greatness to our God, there's none like you. Lord, you are the rock on which I stand. Lord, all your ways are perfect, and all your ways are right. I know I don't deserve it, but you are a God that cannot lie. You are my rock. You are my rock. You are my rock, my rock, my rock, my rock. You are my rock. Well, oh my God, to you be all the glory. Oh my God, there is no one like you. Oh my God. Me, myself, and my wife boarded our flight to come to this council, Holy Convocation from Sydney. Our flight was stopped on the tarmac about to leave. And they announced we have to go back and refuel. I couldn't believe it. They loaded the passengers with the plane with no fuel in it. <laughs> so we have to reverse the flip plane right back to where we boarded and waited for two hours. And after the refueling, we're about to leave again. They announce it might be longer. Okay, Lord, what is it this time? And then we found out that the landing gear is not working. And I said to my wife, did we really board it the right plane? Or are we on the wrong flight? And only to find out it was American Airlines. So I said to my wife, the next time, Let's book an Australian flight, Qantas, so we can make it to the Holy Convocation. But by God's mercy, they managed to fix it, and we flew in the air 14 hours to get to L.A. At the same time, I was deep in prayer that the landing gear will work when we get into L.A. Praise the Lord. And as soon as they announced we're getting close, Lord Jesus, please let those wheels come out. <laughs> Praise the Lord, because you can't fix anything in the air. And we made it, brothers and sisters, and I'm thankful to God to be in this holy convocation. Now I know. That's why our airline was been trying with some interference, because there was some Holy Ghost service happening, about to happen yesterday. <laughs> And this weekend, I'm so blessed to be here, brothers and sisters, to have service with you all. Pray God for my strength and my family. Bless you.
need your power. We need your power. We need your power. sister in the green. Little sister in the green right here. Yellow mic, yellow mic. One more time, one more time. One more time, one more time. I'm glad to be at service. I'm glad to be at service. Time for one more.
For the Lord God is omnipotent. For the Lord my God is wonderful. Hallelujah. For salvation and glory. One more. Bear with me, brothers. I'm trying to get those that came from a very long way. Uh, so the last will be my brother right there. The bald one. Yeah. Green mic. Green mic. Yes, yes. Mighty long way, Lord. Mighty long way. Mighty long way, Lord. A mighty long way. Mighty long way, Lord. Mighty long way. Look where you brought me from. Mighty long way. Oh yes, a mighty long way, Lord. Mighty long way. A mighty long way. Mighty long 
and testimony. You know, I'm not sorry for sweating so much. When I give God praise, I act like nobody's here because it's just between me and him. Thank you all for sharing your testimony and giving a praise unto the Lord. That will conclude our praise and testimony service. Thank you very much once again. We will hand the service to Brother Mark Moretti. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Welcome to First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. We are still celebrating the 28th International Holy Youth Convocation, the 35th telecast, and the 26th radio anniversary. We're also still celebrating 40 years of leadership. Want to continue to keep Pastor Jennings in your prayers, as well as his family. I want to pray for the brothers that minister along with them and their families. I want to continue to pray for the sick and the shut-in, the youth department as always. We want to pray for one another. We thank God much again for the services that took place last night. God Almighty truly visited his people last night. Thank God we had several people receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That is a blessing. God is still in the Holy Ghost giving business. Amen. God can still feel more today as well. Amen. Wonderful. Next announcement. It says, greetings, brothers and sisters, to all the auxiliaries, volunteers, and everyone who came out to support and participate in our seminars and activities. Your First Church youth captains would like to say thank you for all your hard work and for celebrating with us. Your unwavering dedication and commitment has truly made this event a success. For any questions and information concerning future events, 
You can visit our youth events page or email the youth captains at youth underscore captains at fcooljc.com. It says, God bless and peace be unto you all, your first church youth captains. Next announcement, this comes from the culinary team. Um, there will be dinners that will, it will be free dinners that will be served in the lower gymnasium after the service. They're also asking that all registered buses can pick up platters on the gym, on the third floor of the gym. Please send brothers to pick them up. Next announcement, just want to let you know about Canada. Um, their second holy convocation is uh, fast approaching. That will be June 14th through the 16th at Operating Engineers Banquet Hall Conference Center. That's 2245 Spears Road, Oakville, Ontario, Canada, L6L6X8. Again, that will take place June 14th, beginning at 7 p.m. The next announcement, it says, uh, greetings, brothers and sisters. Airport pickup and drop off from headquarters. The First Church shuttle service operates from headquarters to the following. Philadelphia Airport, train and bus stations. Please plan accordingly. Uh, it says 3 p.m. from headquarters to Philadelphia Airport, train and bus stations. Monday, April 1st, pickups from the following hotels. Courtyard, Hilton, Homewood Suites, and Residence Inn. 4.30 a.m. from all listed hotels to Philadelphia Airport, train and bus stations. Uh, 9 a.m from all listed hotels to Philadelphia Airport, train and bus stations. 12 p.m. from all listed hotels to the Philadelphia Airport, train and bus stations. Uh, that's Amtrak, Megabus, and Greyhound. For the Delta Hotel, please utilize the hotel shuttle service for your airport drop-off. Thank you, this comes from the transportation team. And uh, the last one from the transportation team, it says, greetings for those returning to the hotels. Please meet in the gymnasium immediately after the service and remain until the vehicle is ready. For the visiting buses, the pickup location is on 5th Street. And it says, thank you. Also, the, uh, the, um, for the Washington, D.C., it says, uh, Pastor Jennings is starting a new temporary location for First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, welcoming all the saints of Washington, D.C., and surrounding areas. So this temporary location would be at the Apostolic Faith Church of Jesus Christ, the Lord. That's 5305 Akeko Keek Road, and that's Brandywine, Maryland. Again, uh, the Apostolic Faith Church of Jesus Christ, the Lord. That's 5305 Akeko Keek Road. I pray I'm saying that right. Yeah. And uh, that's Brandywine, Maryland. After what? Echo Keek. There you go. Thank you, brother. Uh, amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And the next announcement, <laughs> the next announcement, this is a two-week report of the baptisms. 37 in headquarters, uh, 29 so far during this, holy con this youth convocation. We have 14 in Bronx, New York, two in New Brunswick, New Jersey, Three in Del Mar, Delaware, 10 in Baltimore, Maryland, 116 in Richmond, Virginia, two in, two in Charleston, South Carolina, two in Florence, South Carolina, eight in Columbia, South Carolina, two in Raleigh, North Carolina, one in Rocky Mount, North Carolina, one in Augusta, Georgia, one in Valdosta, Georgia, 23 in Atlanta, Georgia, eight in Miami, Florida, 24 in Orlando, Florida, Three in Tallahassee, Florida. 35 in Cleveland, Ohio. 10 in Lafayette, Louisiana. Three in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Four in Portland, Oregon. One in Frederick, Washington. 12 in North Chicago. Four in Detroit, Michigan. Two in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Nine in Houston, Texas. Six in San Antonio, Texas. Seven in Dallas, Texas. 14 in Los Angeles, California. International. Two in Birmingham, England. Six in Canada. One in Dubai. Four in Kissy, Kenya. Ten in Nairobi, Kenya. Three in Sierra Leone, West Africa. Thirteen in Johannesburg, South Africa. 
two in Port Elizabeth, South Africa, three in New Spirit, South Africa, seven in Cape Town, South Africa, five in Durban, South Africa, five in Port Stepstone, South Africa, five in Victoria West, South Africa. This is a two-week report, 464. That is a blessing. For more information regarding the upcoming baptism that's on a uh, calendar, you can visit us at www.truthofgod.com. Again, www.truthofgod.com. Also, before I forget, you want to remember Brother Stewart's family. He did pass away last night, so keep his family in your prayers from the Del Mar Temple. At this time, we're going to turn it over to the Mass Choir.
wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Let's give them another hand clap. We thank God much for everything that went up so far. At this time, we're going to turn it over to our media director, Elder Dan Thompson. All right, saints, all right. Scripture says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. We certainly want to do that. Here again, we say peace be unto you. We thank God again for blessing us to be back in the house of prayer another time. As always, we give God the highest due praise and due honor. Oh, we thank him so much for blessing us all to still be alive. Still be alive. And have a chance to offer praise and glory to him and to acknowledge him. Oh, we thank him so much for the gathering of God's people here today. Uh, this, as you know, is another celebration of God and the gathering of God's people together. Our 28th uh, youth convocation, 35th, I do believe, uh, radio broadcast anniversary and the 26th telecast anniversary. We thank God for all of these milestones and God alone has made it possible. Uh, we praise and thank our God. We thank him always, certainly for the way of holiness which you all are striving to walk in uh, after the singing and the shouting is over. It's still going to come down to the word. Is that right? Still going to come down to the word and not just the word, but obedience to what God said do. The singing and dancing is part of what he said to do, but there's other parts too. Is that right? And we certainly give due respect to all the deceased brethren, to the apostles or to the prophets and to the apostles. We thank God for all of them. We give due respect to our dearly beloved brother and pastor, Pastor Jennings. As you know, it's 40 years since God has put him to work. <laughs> 40 years since God has put Pastor Jennings to work, and we certainly want to continue to work along with the vision that God has given him. Uh, we thank God so much for all the ministry and brethren likewise that have come from far and from near. Uh, when we say far, we mean far. Uh, thank God for Minister Mars and those that have traveled from Australia and other places in the South Pacific. Uh, those from Europe, from Canada, and from other parts of the world, we thank God for those that are here. And certainly there's many who desire to be here that are not able to. Uh, but while we're here, we certainly want to give God the praise and due regard that's due him. Uh, I don't know if we have time to go to any of the brethren. Yes. We're going to call upon just two brothers, uh, given the time uh, is running short. Uh, our secretary of all the ministers, Minister Eldridge. <laughs> Minister Eldridge here. We say greetings to everyone. We certainly do greet you in the mighty and the matchless name of the one God, Jesus Christ. We thank him for the prophets and apostles, and certainly to our present day leader and apostle, we thank God for him, Pastor Gino Jennings, and to all the ministers and all you brothers and sisters that are gathered here today in the house of God. We thank God for his goodness and his mercy. We thank the Lord for bringing us into fellowship again, that we can praise and glorify his name in the truth. That's a blessing. And as I often do wherever I go, I want to thank God for placing Pastor Jennings in my life because I have been blessed of the Lord through Pastor Gino Jennings. And I'm not telling you something that I'm repeating from somebody else. I'm telling you something that I have lived and am currently living right now. And so I do not want to ever discredit anything that he has done for me and the work that he allows me to participate in in care of him. And I thank Pastor Jennings for his vision and for his leadership. And I thank God for the message that I have been listening to him since 1998. And this has been a consistent message from the first day that I heard it. 
And I believe that's why all of us are here today because of the consistency and God literally using him. Not everyone can say that they're in a place where God has chosen someone to lead people. And so I believe in leadership. I believe in submitting to leadership. And I'm asking the saints to do all in your power to be faithful in your work and in your service to the Lord because God could choose somebody else rather than you. But we see our calling as it relates to salvation and the Lord bringing us here. And again, I love you all, and there's nothing you can do about that. Peace be. Thank God for our minister of, of uh, the secretary of all the ministers, of those who don't know, and the minister Etheridge is the one that communicates much with all the ministers uh, when many of you are perhaps asleep. But we thank God for his work and certainly for the contribution to the work of the Lord. We're going to ask one other brother to come up and give a few remarks uh, before we pass it over to Pastor Jennings. Uh, minister Abraham Avilis from the state of Florida. sisters. Uh, it's, it's good to be in the wicked city of Philadelphia. Uh, I, had to, I had to leave the comfort of God's country to come to this nasty place. Sissy land. Y'all got some sissies here, Pastor. I mean, that stuff, that's, that stuff is running everywhere. That's sad, but it is everywhere. And we thank God for giving us the opportunity to be here one more time. Uh, since the last time I was here, um, my mother had passed away. Um, and when you love much, you, you hurt much. Um, I'm still dealing with some of that and asking God to help me to deal with it. Um, but... <clears throat> But God is good. God is good. I would say if he would have left me to live with her for a thousand years, it still wouldn't have been enough time. So I thank God for the days that he did keep us together. Um, I want to honor Pastor Jennings for such a hard work. You know, when I first met him, there was no such thing as YouTube or television. We used to wake up at 12 o'clock to catch him on the radio station. And uh, sometimes we would even put the alarm clock to make sure that we wake up to listen to the radio and then listen to him for 30 minutes and go back to sleep. You know, cause the truth is always, they always gonna give us some jacked up times. They can't give us, you know what I mean? They couldn't, they couldn't give us Sunday, eight o'clock, you know, that was the false prophet's time, so. <laughs> They'll let you get on the radio, but you're going to be at midnight, 2 o'clock in the morning, or something like that, you know. But I thank God for his dedication. And when I first met Pastor Jennings, you know, I, I'm sitting in the front. And I'm waiting for the preacher to show up, you know. There he comes, walking in the middle of the aisle with his hat in, in his hand. And William, William was not with him that day. I don't know where Williams was, but he showed up and sit on the little chair in the pulpit. And ever since then, you know, he, he would sit there and rub his face, and I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, man, this preacher ain't gonna say nothing. He's falling asleep. <laughs> but but you, see how, you see how quiet he is all the time. So he sits there and he's just rubbing his face and Meditating, I'm thinking, man, I don't know what I've got myself into here. <laughs> anyway, they gave him, they gave him that time, that time was up. And man, when that man got up in the pulpit and he stopped speaking. Yeah. I knew then, I knew then my answer was, my, 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 that, listen, for many years, I have prayed to God, and I will even complain to God, and I will tell the Lord, Lord, I can read in the scripture where you say you are building yourself a church without a spot or wrinkle. All I'm asking you to do is show me where this place is. 
I don't care if it's on the other side of the world. I will go to, I will go to it. I just want you to show it to me because I know you can't lie. So you're not lying, and I'm not. I'm just saying you you show me where this place is on who's doing it with you, so that I can go to work. I'm, I I want to work for you, Lord, but I I don't want my work to be in vain. I want to make sure that if, where, wherever I put my foot in there, I see your footprint first. That way I know I'm stepping in solid ground and I'm not sinking. And it took seven years for that to happen when I first met him and Pastor Jennings got up there and the first message he preached was women preachers in the church. And right then I say, hoorah! <laughs> I found them. I said, the Lord has shown me I found them. That's what I found them. I knew it was him. I knew it was him. And I just, I, I just thank God because through the many trials and tribulations, my ups and downs. And sometimes even people say, I think Mr. Abraham is gonna quit. Where do you think I'm going? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, where should we go? What 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 is the, what is the alternative? Where is our alternative? I mean, you show it to me. Because we have we have traveled the world and we have not found, listen, we have entire countries, entire countries where there's not a single Righteous preacher, entire countries, where it's not a single man crying out for the Lord. So you tell me, where, where should we go that we can actually say we walk in where the Lord has appointed us to be? There is no, there is no place like this. You're not going to find it. You got a lot of imitators. <laughs> A lot of imitators. But you can't imitate God. God has appointed Pastor Jennings to do a work. And I can tell you, I can tell you last night, I seen the fulfillment, I seen the fulfillment of a prophecy that was given for the church around the world. And God gave it to a brother. The brother passed it on to the right, to the right person. Because when a prophecy comes for the world, he's not going to give it to me. Because he didn't send me to the world. But he's going to give it to Pastor Jennings. And he's going to stir him up. And Pastor Jennings, that message you preached last night, it was a message that came from God to the world. To the world. And the message last night was beyond first church. Because you got people all over the world looking for the Holy Ghost. I can tell you, God will give you the Holy Ghost said, no matter where you are. And then the Bible says when the spirit of truth will come, he will guide you to the truth. He can give it to you in the Baptist church. He can give it to you in the Methodist church and then go and grab you from there and bring you to the truth. He will bring you to the truth. One thing I can tell you, when the Lord brings you to the truth, no one can take you away from it. You are rooted in it. You are planted by God in the truth and nobody can take you from it. Your daddy can't take you from it. Your mama can't take you from it. Your daughters and, and brothers and sisters, your family members, the people that you love the most, they still cannot take you from it. Now to everybody who's sick in the Holy Ghost, get to it. Because I'm telling you, if you don't have it, you don't have no clue what you're missing. The Holy Ghost will bring to you a satisfaction that you cannot find on nothing else or nothing else. The, the Holy Ghost brings more pleasure than a woman, 
The Holy Ghost bring pleasure that drugs cannot bring. The Holy Ghost bring a pleasure that money can buy. The Holy Ghost bring pleasure and satisfaction that the world cannot give you. Let's get to it. You'll pray for you, brother. <laughs> pray for me. It was nice seeing you. I'm fired up. I'm ready to go to work. And listen, I know that message yesterday. I sucked it in. Even I could not even rejoice because I wanted to listen to every word he say. But all I can tell you, Pastor Jennings, I'm going back to Florida, and I'm going to stir people up about his Holy Ghost. God, God be my helper. God be my, God be my helper everywhere I step foot. I'm going to push that church to go after that Holy Ghost, my Lord, because we're running out of time, and the time is up. We got to get to it. Thank God for you, Pastor Jim. All right. Good, strong, wholesome words. All right, God. We thank God, certainly, for Brother Avilis from uh, the state of Florida. Uh, we're so needful of the help everywhere. Is that right? We thank God, saints of God, the more you come in contact with God's word, you'll see what God is doing. You know, many times you can't see ahead of you, but if you just take a chance to look back, you'll see, like the song said, that God has brought us from a long way, long way. And you can appreciate what God has brought us from. Everybody has a story. Is that right? Everybody has a story. Very quickly, I'll just let you know, there's many years ago, I uh, desired to be in something like this. And I uh, mentioned the past some years ago. There was a picture that was hanging in an old saint's home back in the 1980s, early 1980s, that I had seen. It was a picture of uh, Bishop S.E. Johnson, and those of you who are familiar with his ministry. But it had a picture that looked just like this one, exactly like it. And I looked at that picture, and I, I, I longed to be in a congregation like that. I longed for it. And God knew my desire, and it has come to pass. Come right to pass. For those who don't know, this is, again, the Worldwide Truth of God radio and television program. Our address is 5105 North 5th Street in the city of Philadelphia here in Pennsylvania in the United States of America, where the Apostle Pastor Gino Jennings is our leader, teacher, guide, and he is our general overseer. Without further ado, we're going to present to our leader, teacher, guide, oh messenger of the Almighty God, the Apostle, Pastor Gino Jennings. Him, there is no God with him, and by all means, there is no God equal to him. We thank him for sending to us the prophets and the holy apostles of the Lord and Savior. We are indebted to him for showing mercy and bringing to us the way of holiness, which is God's way. He taught the apostles and the apostles confirmed unto us the things of Jesus. So we are grateful, we are enjoying this youth conference. I want to commend the youth staff. I commend the youth staff and everything that you put together, the, the convention committees that put together the programs. And again, I'm so grateful to be able to see some of the churches that came on the screen. You know, technology came a long way to be able to see the different brothers and sisters 
from other parts of the world is certainly a great blessing. To all of the brothers that labor with us in word and doctrine, we thank God for you that are here and to the many hundreds of brothers that minister in other parts of the world that desire to be here and are not. To all of our viewers, this is the program that shakes up your home and your pastor's church. We believe what is written here. The Bible tells us whatsoever things were written aforetime, they were written for our learning. Uh, we're going to ask you to remember Mother Stewart. Many of you know her and many of you don't. But uh, Brother Stewart, I believe he was in his 90s. He passed away yesterday while we was here in, in service. But it's a blessing to live a ripe old age born of the water and of the spirit and serving God at the same time. The Bible says, be thou faithful unto death. And this is what we're in this for, not for a temporary fix, but to be faithful to God until God snatched the breath out of our body. So we are thankful, we are blessed, when I think of where God brought us, you know that song that they sang, it sounds like one of them songs from Jamaica. <laughs> I had a feeling it was. A mighty long way. The moment that brother hit a few words, whoever was from Jamaica, they was on their feet. <laughs> Amen. And I thought about that because it is so true. For all of us, God truly brought us from a mighty long way. We are thanking God for the testimony that my sister gave uh, in the choir who had stage four cancer. And when she came up for prayer last year in Greensboro, we laid hands on her, we prayed for her. And God healed her and wiped her clean of cancer. Amen. You know, there are some religions, and I mean some of these folk that claim they're Christians. Do you know they teach that God is not a healer no more? That is a teaching, not only here in America, but abroad. In fact, Jehovah Witnesses teach that. God Almighty is not a healer. He only healed those that was in the scriptures. Well, Jesus said, I'm the same. Yesterday and today and forevermore. We thank God for the word of God that the Holy Ghost preached last night. I received a text this morning. I received a text this morning that several folks received the Holy Ghost last night speaking in town. Amen. And what Abraham was saying was true. The message is for the world. Comments was coming up on YouTube. Some folks received the Holy Ghost while they was watching the message. There were several people that commented and said for the first time, now they know what it takes to receive the Holy Ghost. You see, I can talk to you about the Holy Ghost and talk to you how you need it. But if it's not properly taught, you still don't know how to seek him. You know you need it. And you may know you have to have it. But we must know how to seek the Lord. The scripture says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Well, tell me how to do it. Quoting the scriptures is one thing. Making the scriptures plain is another. All right, let me say to you that are 
in the south side of Harlem. I really wanted to get right in Harlem, New York, but all the, venue was, the venues were taken. So we'll be in the heart of Times Square. Well, that's better than nowhere. Uh, you that's in the south side of Harlem, or you that's still throughout Harlem and in Times Square and around New York, April 13th and 14th, we'll be at 1535 Broadway, New York, New York, 1535 Broadway. Now, uh, the way Harlem is, because Harlem is so popular, you have to try to find a venue in the heart of Harlem about a year or a year and a half ahead. So God willing, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying. And uh, until we find right in Harlem, I want to get close to, if I can, Malcolm X Boulevard. Amen. And get right in the heart, in the nitty gritty of the city. That's where I want to be, where, where the devil runs real rampant. But for now, on April 13th and 14th, we'll be in the uh, south side of Harlem in the heart of Times Square, 1535 Broadway. That's in New York, New York. April 20th and the 21st will be the dedication service of the new temple in Pine Bush, New York. That address is 29 New Street, 29 New Street, April 20th and 21st in Pine Bush, New York. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, we'll be rolling in your area. Mark it down, April 27th and April 28th. We, at, we will be at the uh, Doubletree by Hilton, 500 Mansfield Avenue, 500 Mansfield Avenue. Pittsburgh, we're looking to roll in on you with Bible. You preachers now, that's in all these locations. You come out, close your churches up, and padlock them. If you don't believe the Bible, you ought to padlock them anyway. And if you believe the word of God, well, you come fellowship with us. God be our helper. Colorado, God willing, your date is coming up that we'll be in your area. Mexico, I will try my best to get in your area. I'm getting quite a bit of requests throughout Mexico, old Mexico and new Mexico. I don't speak Spanish, but I got some brothers that speak it and can interpret it for us. So God willing, we'll be down in Mexico and Colorado. I will try my best Arizona to get to you. I will try my best uh, California to get to you and Florida. God willing, I, I want to get in Tampa. I would like to get in Tampa, Florida. God willing, when the time said we'll get back in Orlando and Miami, but I want the whole state of Florida. Amen. So the next big city that I want to get into is Tampa, Florida, and hit them hard. Boston, God willing, I pray God that I get some time where I can get back up to you. Connecticut, I hope to stop in your area. I would like to get into the state of Maine, right in Maine, to get in there and give them what they so badly need. I want to say to the saints of the First Church of the Lord Jesus Christ in Canada, uh, we, I believe we have two vans that are already lettered for you, and we have your coach here on headquarters ground. So God willing, that will be shipped up to your area. I want to thank God for Brother Scott, who's head, my project manager on the new temple there and uh, Canada, and you know the new Canada temple is looking good. It's beautiful to have faithful people that don't mind working for the work of the Lord. So uh, the Canadian convention is coming up this year also. So God willing, we're looking to be there in Canada. God be our helper. Remember the European conference is coming up. 
This year, it will be held in Berlin, Germany. I do hope that many brothers and sisters from around the world will make this trip into Berlin. I don't know of any holiness churches in Berlin, but we do know the past history of Berlin. So to be able to go there and bring Berlin the words of God, God knows that will certainly be a historic event. After I leave Berlin, I go to uh, Mozambique, God willing, for the convention in Mozambique. And after I leave Mozambique, I go to the country of Malawi for the convention in Malawi. And if I have any strength left, I go from Malawi to South India, to the churches of South India, and then I go to East India, to the churches of East India, and then I come back home and will be there for a good while before I go anywhere else. It's a lot of work that has to be done and needs to be done. You know, it takes God to make not just a preacher, but a leader. And when God make a leader, God give him a vision and then show him how to lead the people. If the only thing you can do is preach to the people, okay. But you got to have divine skill to lead the people. See, if you don't have divine skill to lead the people, then uh you don't know what you're doing if you try to take upon yourself to be a leader. That's why I said, like I said last night, you know, many times when God sent a man, and I know this from experience, God may start him off with something small and see how he appreciate and treat that small thing. I believe the Bible says uh, a little one shall become a thousand. thousand. Amen. So... We start out small. And sometimes when things get big, and you may hand someone something big, they don't know how to treat it the same way the one did that had it when it was small. So you have to train them. Amen. And keep them by under, under Bible subjection so they treat that large thing with just as much tender, loving care if it was a small thing. You see, if you can't be faithful, dedicated to one, you will never know how to handle several thousand. I remember when we had one member in Fredericksburg, Virginia, one member. I wasn't driving then. Well, I didn't have no car then. I was on Amtrak train once a month for 10 years, going to Fredericksburg, Virginia, preaching to one saint. We only had one member. She passed on now. But I can never go into Fredericksburg without thanking God for Sister Betty Greenhouse. She was the first member down there in First Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. She opened up her home. We had service in the basement. She had one of them old country wooden stoves that's made out of that hard cast iron. You open it up and put a log in and pray you don't catch on fire. <laughs> but she was faithful, literally, faithful unto death. We would catch the train 10 years during this, preaching to one. If you can't be faithful with a little, then how can you be ruler properly over much? Amen. So I'm glad for the way God brought us, bringing us that way. It was teaching us, schooling us, and uh, it taught us how to better appreciate where we are now. You take a man who's a millionaire, 
and give his sons and daughters, whenever they turn 21, a million dollars. Them sons and daughters do not have the same appreciation for that million dollars as the father does because he know what it took to make that happen. He knew what it takes to make that million dollars. But you take someone that had the labor, sweat, they understand the value of it better than the one who he gives the money to. That's the way it is in the work of the Lord. Amen. We understand what it takes to build. And we understand how easy the devil can tear down what is built. So I encourage the brethren, uh, handle the word of God always carefully. The Apostle Paul said not handling the word of God deceitfully, meaning wrongfully. I want all the brothers that are listening in around the world to hear this. That's right. If one soul, hear me, hear me, hear me good, pass away, based upon the misinformation you gave them after you was taught better and that soul one just one pass away believing in what you said their blood their blood their blood oh yes thank god will be on your head Amen. There's a former brother who's in that predicament now. Amen. You know, I preach moreover how God cannot come right now until things in the Bible that are fulfilled first before his coming. Well, the brother took it upon himself to lie and told a brother that I said, I know when Christ is coming. Listen, if I knew when Christ was coming, this is one convention I would miss. I would miss it. I wouldn't be here. I would just do whatever I'm going to do and I'll pass it around to some folk when Jesus is coming so they can do whatever they're going to do and then try to get yourself together before he get here. I don't know when he's coming. But one of my former brothers lied to the man and discouraged the brother so bad. And I just found this out yesterday. Discouraged the brother so bad just by that one lie. The brother backslid. This is after God delivered the brother from drugs and everything. The brother backslid, went back on drugs and OD'd and died in his house. That brother's death oh, yes. now is on the fella's head that told him these things. That's right. I don't care how bold you talk or how loud. The souls of the people must be first priority. That's right. Always. When you put your priority above the souls, you're not a minister of Jesus Christ. The Bible said, take heed to yourselves and to the doctrine. You must feed the church of God and you must feed them well. Amen. I want to always encourage the brothers, always put the word of God first. You know, there are some men out there and say, he talk about his ministers like you talk about the men out there. I mm. preach to the world. And I don't have no favoritism and no respect of person. And if there's any ministers following me that's too soft, too soft to take this message, you don't need to be in the pulpit then. Okay. Who am I talking to? The world. Jesus laid the message to his apostles so rough at one point they asked, then who 
then can be saved. That's right. So you brothers that got in mind you want to be ministers, if you think it's a walking apart and walking down a field of daisies and all of that stuff because you want attention. If you want attention, you don't want to be a minister. No. Because if I see you getting attention or laboring for attention, then I will put you in a place where you only can get a little attention. <laughs> That's right. Because you're in it for the wrong purpose. That's right. If God put me in, I'm, I'm not in it for attention. Why should we want attention and if God didn't even send us? That's right. I thought about Bishop S.C. Johnson just now that Brother Dan mentioned. There was an elder that he had in Chicago. And Chicago church was an enormous old movie theater that was almost as big as the headquarters. Thousands of members. Thank God the members was giving the preacher money, giving him anniversary, giving him this and giving him that, giving him the other. The word got back to Bishop Johnson. <laughs> I like the wisdom that he used. The brother got real comfortable. Bishop Johnson called him and told him, uh, praise the Lord, brother, praise the Lord. He said, praise the Lord, Bishop. Bishop said, I hear you. <laughs> Doing some, <laughs> some work up there. He said, Bishop, the people really love me. The people really love me. They give me everything, Bishop, and so and so and so. He said, all right. I'm going to move you out of Chicago. He said, but Bishop, there's about three or 4,000 people here. He said, I know it. We're opening up a church, I forgot the city, but in the south. He said, it's way in the woods. <laughs> in the woods. He said, I thought about sending one of the brothers, but you're doing so well <laughs> in Chicago. So the minister asked him, how many is that, Bishop? He said, ah, oh, I think it's about between five to 10 people. He asked Bishop, you going to take me from three or 4,000 to preach to five or 10? And the old mother who witnessed it, she told me when he, he responded to Bishop like that, that motivated Bishop to move him quicker. Because if you can't value five or 10 or That's right. one, That's right. you will never know how to appreciate two, three, or 4,000. That's right. The souls of the people. Yeah. Souls of the people. It's no longer important to the world of preachers. So to have ministers who value your soul, oh, yes. that's a blessing God knows. When ministers will value the souls of the people. That's it. See, a lot of men know how to preach to you. But they don't value the soul until preaching become ritual. I'm going in to preach. They go put in their time like they're punching in the clock and leave. There are souls you're dealing with. That's right. And those souls are not mine. No, are they yours? That's right. Jesus said, all souls mine. are mine. mine. Think of it. How are the souls being handled that belong to God? That's right. Will God be pleased with the mythology you use in handling all souls. all souls. For he declared, all souls are mine. are mine. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 18. I had no intentions on working on this, but I'm parked here now. Oh, yes. I want you preachers that are listening in to hear this. Oh, yes. You men out there that are eager to get in somebody's pulpit. 
That's the most dangerous place of worship. The pulpit. You got to give an account to God to everything you said. And you got to give an account to God for everything you said God told you to say. That's right. You got to give an account to God for everything you do. You got to give an account to God for everything that you told to tell the people that God told you to do. That's right. You got to give an account to God where you go. If you said the Lord sent me here. The Lord sent you. Hmm. Glory to God. That one said that's not Bible. The Lord sent the apostles and said, go ye into all the world. All the world. And all everywhere the they went, they never made a failure. That's right. When I think of how the angels rejoice when just one soul repented, just one. Somebody posted last night, they're so mad at me, <laughs> and they're really mad at you and the thousands that are watching the program. Somebody said, I never call him leader, teacher, and guide. God is my all. Well, being called leader, teacher, and guide, folks ain't calling me their all. No. Paul said, follow me. God. Well, that's a leading position. That's right. As I follow Christ. That's right. In the book of In Isaiah. In the eighth chapter of the book of mm -hmm. Acts of the Apostles, there was a eunuch responsible of the queen's treasure. Reading the scriptures. Reading the scriptures. And the spirit moved on Philip, the right. evangelist. Understand this, he asked him, what thou readest? What thou readest. And the eunuch said, how can I except a, some man guide me. guide me. Guide me. He told the apostles, teach. That's right. All nations. All nations. So yes, I, I'm a leader. I'm a teacher. I'm a guide. That's right. I'm certainly an evangelist. Certainly. I believe God made me a good evangelist. Oh, yes. I'm an ambassador sent by authority to represent authority. That's right. Now, I know you that are watching don't like that. No. You will say he's full of himself. No, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> That's right. And I won't let nobody diminish me down to what God didn't make me. Behold, I have given him for a witness. Listen. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 55 and at verse 4. I have given him for a witness. For a witness. To the people. To the people. A leader. A what? A leader. A leader. And commander. He's a commander. To the people. To the people. That's right. So, yes, God put us in that position. No board of directors voted me in there. No That's board right. of directors had me on their payroll. <laughs> to lead the people. I was put in by the Holy Ghost. That's right. I can select the apostles that God made choice among us. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's somebody keep posting. And they, they're really mad. They say, oh, Pastor Jenna, uh, God, the wrath of God is ready to come upon you. The judgment of God is coming upon you. There was only 12 apostles. You're a liar. That's a lie. What about Barnabas? Barnabas. And Paul. And Paul. You got to get Jesus before you get Peter. That's right. <laughs> you see, they don't know. They don't know. They just don't know. Yes. God has set some in the church first, first apostles. apostles. Now, you can be jealous about it and be mad, but no god sent preacher is a spotlight lover. Hmm. If he was a spotlight lover, he wouldn't preach Christ. That's right. We are pointing you to the light. That's right. And Christ is the light of the world. Amen. Hear me good. Amen. Whenever you got someone that God sends and God leads, you're going to have someone's, plural, that's out to get them. Out to get them. And it won't be everybody on the outside all the time. No. The Bible said, of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things. 
to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch and remember. Watch and remember. I seek not to warn you night and day and tears also. No one should say, are you talking about me? That's the Judas syndrome. <laughs> yeah, man, that's the Judas syndrome. <laughs> that's right. I've been through that already. I, I, can, I can give my testimony. Yes, you can. That scripture I've been through countless and countless and countless of times. Mm. And that's one scripture I will go through until I die, if I die. That's right. Yeah, man, one man posted on social media, he said, when you die, it'll be the happiest day of my life. My Lord, my Lord. He said, I'm tired of turning YouTube on and you keep coming up. All you got to do is skip to go to somebody else. <laughs> that's all you got to do. Skip and go to somebody else. That's right. He said, every day I wash you. For what? <laughs> How can you be tired of seeing someone? You got control of your television or your computer. You can unplug it. He was so angry, he said, you pop up on my phone. Go to YouTube, I want to see something else. There you are. He said, your mother so and so and so. I'll be glad when you die. My Lord, my Lord. That's all right. That's all right. It's appointed once. If I die, it's an appointment designated by God. That's right. But I'm not dead yet. <laughs> God send men through the scriptures. And if you look at the Old Testament, they were so angry at the prophets, they even killed some of them. Killed some of them. The hatred that was in the people towards men of God. <laughs> they didn't like the righteous stand. But when you hate it, the Bible says, woe unto them whom the world speak well of. Well of. All right, let's get the souls and see who they belong to now. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, and we're at verse 4. Hey Amen. I want to say to the mass choir, you sung my heart happy again. All I want right now from Jesus, just give me a little more grace. That's what I need. Glory to God to run this race. All of us need the grace of God the mercy of God so we can survive in this life. Okay. Follow me in your Bible. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 18 and we're at the fourth verse. My viewers, listen and follow me. That's right. Chapter and verse. Ezekiel chapter 18. We'll start at verse 3. Yes. As I live, saith the Lord God, ye shall not have any occasion anymore to use this proverb in Israel. Yes. Behold, all souls are mine. Hear this. Amen. All souls. All souls are mine. Are mine. As the soul of the Father. As the soul of the Father. So also the soul of the Son is soul mine. The soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth. The soul that sinneth. It shall die. Are you listening? Yes. You that are watching, hear me good. Preachers, churchgoers, politicians, celebrities. That's right. Your position, whether you're rich or poor, That's doesn't right. matter. No, your religious persuasion, God will address that. That's right. Whether you're sinner or saint. Your soul. All souls. Your very being. That's right. Belongs to God. Mine. You're not your own. No. No man and no woman shall walk this life with such arrogance. That's right. And pride. Like there's not a power above you that you must answer to. That's right. The whole world must 
answer to God. That's right. This is why you hear me say, we bow to no man. To no man. You see, the church, God's people, we are the people of the book. That's right. We are the people of the book. A holy, sanctified, righteous people. Mm -hmm. The book of scriptures, God testifies about his people. That's right. How he'll fight for them, love them, take care of them, won't forsake them. That's right. But if they forsake him, yes. he will destroy them. That's right. That's right. If he said all souls are mine, all he's souls. not just talking about saved people. No. All souls. All of them. All of them. Everybody. That's right. Regardless of race, creed, and color, know the truth, don't know the truth, know God, don't know God, never even heard of him. All souls are mine. But your soul, your existence, belong to the master of creation. That's right. We as ministers supposed to be soul keepers. That's right. Soul protectors. That's right. And we are responsible to be feeders of the soul. That's right. Are you listening? Feeding the soul or dealing with the soul, you can never take matters in your own hands. That's right. Because if you destroy <coughs> one soul by your decision, your decisions. you have angered oh, yes. the Almighty. When I say unto the wicked, Listen, listen, listen. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 18. When I say unto the wicked. When I say to the wicked. Thou shalt surely die. You will surely die. And thou givest him not warning. And you don't say nothing. Nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way. Yes. To save his life. To do what? To save his life. That's it. If you love the brothers and sisters. Mm hmm then your ministry will be based upon saving lives. That's right. That's right. Am I right, I said? Amen. That's right. I want you to hear this, viewers. This is why these mega preachers is just focusing on money, prosperity, and get all you can in this life. He is admitting your soul mean nothing to him. That's right. Pastor Paul said it this way. I want you. Not yours. And not yours. Not yours. The preachers out here today want yours. That's right. They don't care about you. They don't care about you. If you care about the souls in the world, tell them what God says. That's right. Not what you feel. Not right. what you think. Not what you dream. Tell them what God says. That's right. This is why the prophets in the Old Testament will come to the people and I quote, they will say, thus saith the Lord. The Lord. The Lord. Or they would say, the word of the Lord came, came. unto me Same. saying. That's right. Notice they will put God's speech first. That's right. Before theirs. That's right. Are you listening? When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. So when a man jump up, hmm. it just go from church to church to get speaker's offerings. That's right. That's what he's speaking for. That's right. Don't care about nobody's soul. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Yeah, glory to God. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 34. We'll Whoa! Give yeah. chapter and verse again. Ezekiel 34. We're going to start at verse 1. Yes. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. Do you hear it? The word of the Lord. There it is. There it is. The word of, of the, the Lord, Lord came, came unto me, me, 
saying, saying son, of man, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Amen. Amen. So don't go telling me I don't have a right to bother preachers. That's right. That's right. God tells the messenger, prophesy, prophesy against, against the shepherds of Israel. Against. Against. What shepherd that loved the sheep naturally Amen. will lead the sheep to brown, dried up, dead grass? Dead, dead grass. Amen. He will do everything in his power yes. to take them from one green pasture to another green pasture to another green pasture. That's right. That's right. Love makes them do it. That's right. Concern makes them do it. Amen. Are you listening? Prophesy and say unto them. Prophesy and say unto them. Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds. Unto the, thus saith the, Lord, the God Lord God unto the shepherds. To the shepherds. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel. That do feed themselves. That feed themselves. Woe to the shepherds of Israel that are selfish. That's right. That's right. Woe be to the shepherds. When you feed yourself. Oh, yes. Your God is your belly. That's right. You don't care. Don't care. About the people. That's right. If you know you care about the people, you don't have to say within yourself, he ain't talking about me. Would I? See, when you got to have that kind of conversation within, <laughs> you're guilty. Yeah. You see, I can talk about, <clears throat> just say if Elder Martin preached about stealing all day, <laughs> thou shalt not steal. And the brothers and sisters start grumbling, oh, he ain't talking about me. Well, if you know you're not a thief, what you grumbling for? That's right. When you hear him talk, you will say, Amen. <laughs> if there's any conviction mm -hmm. whatsoever, Amen. then you must evaluate, reevaluate your treatment of God's souls. That's right. If you want to keep the sword and the wrath of God off your head, off your head. Amen. Reevaluate your treatment of God's souls. That's Do right. you know before I start pastoring, one of the things when God appeared unto me was He gave me a lesson mm. of treating His souls, mm. how to treat them, what pace to run, what not to do what to do and he instilled in me let this always be your guide amen when this is your guide you will do it right yes you will but when this is your guide yeah your heart your heart you will do it wrong that's right because the heart is the most deceitful thing. Oh, yes. And you'll react out of emotion and feeling. But if you react out of scripture, you react out of righteousness. That's right. And the perfect will of God, even when others criticize you, you don't pay your critics no mind. Yes. Are you listening? Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds. Hear my world. Amen. You men that claim you are messengers of God. You have souls so. in your mosque, and your synagogue, and your church. Do God have a complaint mm -hmm. against you? Amen. See, I'd rather for you to have a complaint. Yes. Than God to have one. 
That's right. If God have one, that complaint is serious. Oh, yes. That complaint can be life-threatening. Yeah. That complaint can determine how long I stay on this earth. That's right. And that complaint can determine when I'm leaving oh, yes. this earth. That's right. Are you listening? Son of man, prophesy against. Prophesy. Against the shepherds of Israel. Against. See, prophecy don't always come where you feel like it's in your favor. That's true. Prophecy come in two categories. Warning. Warning. And exhortation. That's right. Comfort. That's right. So God does both. Both. When he sends messengers to the people. That's right. Listen. Pro Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Yes. Prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord the God unto the shepherds. Unto the shepherds. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Yes. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Amen. Amen. Viewers, are you being fleeced? <laughs> That's right. In your church? In your church. Amen. Preachers, are you stealing yeah. church money? That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. When it comes to the work of the Lord and money is given for the work of the Lord, mm -hmm. that's the Lord's money. That's right. Can't steal it. Mm -hmm. Can't fleece the people. That's right. You preachers going to stand before God for years of robbing. Oh, yes. Pastor Janus, ain't nobody can rob from God. Malachi. Give me Malachi. Chapter 3 and verse 8. You know, folks just use this scripture just for tithing. The Bible that's ain't right. just talking about tithing here. That, that's right. Listen at the Bible. Malachi chapter 3 and at verse 8. Says what? Will a man rob God? A question is asked first. Amen. Will a man rob God? Steal from God? Yet ye have robbed me. He said you've done it already. But ye say. Now. Mm -hmm. Ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? Oh, how we do it. Now watch what God tell you. In tithes. You've done it in tithing. And offerings. And you've done it in offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse. Oh. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. Are you listening? That's right. That's right. Whenever... The work of the Lord is being built mm -hmm. and established. Amen. Nobody should take the church's money mm -hmm. and use it at will. That's right. And just freelance with God's money. That's right. If the Lord's money is needed to be used in a particular place, then you should contact your leader first. So things can be properly designated and recorded. That's right. Because anybody can say, I spent this and spent that and spent the other. That's right. But when it's recorded, Document it. Then a financial auditor come. Compare the numbers. Make sure one part of the scale don't weigh more than the other. That's right. If money is tempting to a minister of any organization, that brother don't need to minister. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. One of the qualifications of ministry, you can't. Love money. 
not a greedy of 50 lucre. That's right. Not greedy of 50 lucre. Well, you might as well empty practically 99.9 of the churches. Hmm. Not greedy of 50 lucre. That's right. That's what the Bible says. For a bishop must be blameless. Give chapter and verse. Titus chapter 1 and we're at the 7th verse. A bishop must be blameless. As the steward of God. As the steward of God. Not self-willed. Not self-willed. He can't be hard-headed. He can't be stubborn. He can't be rebellious. The Bible said if you buff it for your fault, take it patiently. Not soon angry. You can't get mad quick. Not given to wine. No boozing. No striker. You can't strike with your hands or your mouth. Not given to filthy lucre. What? Not given to filthy lucre. That's, that's, that's the Bible. Hear me, viewers. Not given to filthy lucre. Are you following a, a religious scam? <laughs> Amen. Now, let me say this to all my social media watchers. Pastor Jen has never responded to people over internet by typing, typing, or writing, or making comments. I don't do that. So if you ever have anybody on internet responding in my name, Amen. it's not me. That's right. I don't care if they attach a picture to it. That's right. I mean, my pictures are, my pictures are everywhere. Yes. But I don't respond to nobody on internet you know the comment section? I don't do that. No. I don't type in. I don't even know how to do it. <laughs> Amen. I acknowledge my computer ignorance. <laughs> Amen. I know how to look at them and read them. I can turn the computer on. I can turn it off. I can send an email. Mm -hmm. I can retrieve an email because I got loads of contracts because projects around the world. Amen. That's it. That's it. I can FaceTime, that's yes. it. Yes. All this other stuff, get an app. <laughs> I have to go to my sons and go to my daughters yes. and tell them, teach thou teach me. <laughs> because me personally, I'm not interested <laughs> in wanting to know it. <laughs> The brothers and sisters that have been knowing me for years, when everybody got into the computer game, <laughs> they used to tell me, you're going to need a computer, Pastor Jennings. My, my children would get on me, Dad, you behind the times. You with the Flintstones. <laughs> Learn the computer. I told them, look, I'm not interested in no computer. Dad, what about contracts? I said, all my contractors give me paper. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that backslid. <laughs> Every contractor I have yeah. in the world, <laughs> every last one, down to cutting grass, Lord. send me email and contracts. Yeah. I have to learn how to sign it electronically. When I buy churches now, uh, if I'm not there in person, they email me all the documents. Yeah. I have to choose the signature. Then press a button, there's my signature. Press a button, there's my initial. Press a button. I said to myself, well, why didn't they come up with this a long time ago? <laughs> as you grow, you learn. Oh, yes. In God, as you grow, you learn, then you apply what you learn to yourself for the betterment of self. When you get too arrogant. Yeah. And too high-minded high that you refuse to learn. Oh yes, you will never be anything worthwhile spiritually right. or naturally. That's right. That's true. Listen, back in Ezekiel thirty-four and verse two. What is it? Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Thank God. All these hundreds of thousands of dollars come in here. I imagine if I would have bagged all of it. Mm. I remember when we ventured out to buy this place. There was a false prophet got over the air begging the people, please don't give him no money. He's going <laughs> to take the money and leave the country. 
He was Lord. just that afraid of the progress of the work of the Lord. My Lord. He said, the Lord told him, I'm going to take the money and leave the country. Mm. You see, when you say the Lord say just so casually. So casually. Like you're talking about somebody in your neighborhood, your next door neighbor, or someone in your backyard. That's right. Who is he that saith? And it cometh to pass. And it come to pass. When the Lord commandeth it not. When the Lord command it not. This it is, not. That's Lamentations. Lamentations 3 and verse 37. Says what? Who is he that saith? Who is he that saith? And it and cometh it, to pass. And it happens. It's fulfilled. When the Lord, when the Lord commandeth it not. Said it not. That's right. So Didn't be very it. slow about blaming something on God. Oh, yes. If it is of God... It'll come to pass. It'll come. If it's not of God, it's going to fall to the ground. It's going to fall to the ground. Listen to this. Back in Ezekiel 34 and verse 2. Yes. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Now think of it, brothers and sisters. Amen. Whatever church you're in mm -hmm. or were in, were. think of this. That bishop at that time mm -hmm. was responsible for your soul. That's right. That's right. What was he doing with it? Yeah. Think of yourself. Oh, yes. Whatever church you was in. Whatever. That elder, that bishop, that so-called prophet or apostle, whatever he called himself. That's right. Was responsible for your soul at that time. Amen. You tell me, was your soul going to hell or was your soul being prepared to meet God? That's right. What position yeah. was your soul in? That's right. Even with the Holy Ghost. With, that's right. What position was your soul in? Amen. That's really something to think about. Yes, it is. What condition? What condition? Did the preacher have my soul in? That's right. Was he saving it or playing with it? Yes. Was he fumbling with it or did he value it? That's right. That's right. That's right. Think. Think. If God said, all souls are mine, are mine, what is your preacher doing with your soul today? That's right. Is he saving it or playing with it? Is he saving it or damning it? Amen. The, the diseased have he not strengthened. Did you hear this? Now in Ezekiel 34 and we're at verse 4. Give chapter and verse again. Ezekiel chapter 34, now we're at verse 4. The disease have ye not strengthened. Have ye not strengthened? Neither have ye healed that which was sick. Neither have you healed that which was sick. Neither have ye bound up that which was broken. You didn't bind up what was broken. Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Have you didn't brought again what was driven away? Neither have ye sought that which was lost. You didn't seek that which is lost. But with force. But with force. And with cruelty. And cruelty. Have ye ruled them. Hallelujah. So being a leader. Oh, yes. Is a divine skill from God. That's right. He teaches you what a man can teach you about balance. That's right. Not too much of this, not too much of that, oh, yes. but you the just right amount, amount of everything. That's right. That's right. You make him preach to the people. Yes. But do you know how to mingle and lead the people? That's right. Jesus taught us, yes. if you love me, that's right. You'll keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. If you love me. The soul is very important. Oh yes. You that are watching, ask yourself. Whether you're black, white, yellow, or red, you know by now I really don't care. Hmm. What stage is your soul in? That's right. 
The one who's handling your soul right now, Handle. today. Handle. I don't care how many thousands is in that group or how many hundreds or just five. Yes. Or one. Yeah. What is the preacher doing with your soul? But the shepherds fed themselves. Listen. Now in the book of Ezekiel chapter 34 and at verse 8. The shepherd fed themselves. They cared for themselves. And fed not my flock. They fed themselves. They did not feed the people. That's right. And when you don't feed the people, you don't care about them. That's right. That's right. When the preachers give you homiletics. Theology, yeah. philosophy. Mm -hmm. And here's the word of God plainly stays preach the word. Preach the word. Be instant, meaning yeah. be consistent, in season, out of season. That's right. And yet the people are more concerned with philosophy and theology. Yeah. And old wise fables. Old wise fables. <laughs> That's right. When those things become a priority yeah. and not the book. Oh, yes. Then your soul is being destroyed. That's right. Church is not a hype. No. Church is sincere God-given business. That's right. And many don't take it as serious yeah. as the one whom God sent and put the load on his back. That's right. Like the child who's given a million. Yeah. Don't take that million as serious as the father who labored for years so that child can have that million. That's right. Because when that child don't value it, you know what's going to happen? The million going to ruin them. Yes. They're going to spend it on foolish stuff. Oh, yeah. Waste it. I think of some of these athletes that done retired. Boxers. This one boxer, what is that? What is his name? He had about $50 million and went through all of it. How do you go through $50 million? <laughs> Amen. One rapper, where he was on top with his Alibaba pants. Amen. Was it Hammer? Hammer, yes, it was. He was moving too. <laughs> Spent eleven thousand dollars for a water fountain. That's right. That's the epitome of stupidity. That's right. The water ain't cleaner or richer. Right. Eleven thousand dollars for a water fountain. He that troubles when his I can own. go to the kitchen and turn on the sink and drink nasty Philadelphia water. That's right. Or go to the market and get some bottled water. That's right. Hear me, world, world, hear this. Your priorities are screwed up. Oh, yes. Your priorities are backward. That's right. Everything in your life is first but God. But God. That's right. That's right. Glory to God. That's right. What you have, son? That, now in Ezekiel 34 and at verse 8. Ezekiel at, what? Ezekiel chapter 34, we'll start at verse 7. Says what? Therefore, ye shepherds. Therefore, all the prophet was sent to work on them. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Therefore, ye shepherds. Ye shepherds. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear, you pastors, mm -hmm. bishops, elders, evangelists, That's right. apostles, prophets. That's right. Whatever you call yourself. Whatever. Hear the word of the Lord. God's word. As I live, saith the Lord God. As I live, and there's no end to him. Oh, no. Oh, there's no end to him. Oh, no. Listen. As I live, saith the Lord God. As I live, saith the Lord God. Surely because my flock became a prey. Surely. Amen. My flock followers became flock a prey. Became a prey. And my flock became meat to every beast of the field. That means the shepherd became a predator. That's right. That's right. If the flock become a prey, a prey. then the shepherd become a predator. That's right. 
whether a sex predator That's or a right. money predator. Amen. He is nothing more than a religious predator. That's right. What do you have before you today? Amen. That's something. If you're nothing but meat to meat. him, meat, then to him, you're not a valuable soul. That's right. This is why they can teach you any old junk any old thing. and have no conscience. That's right. Think of it. There used to be a false prophet back in the 60s, 70s, and I believe the 80s, and most old heads know him here in America, Reverend Ike. Remember him? Oh, yes. Oh, I Man, Joel Alstein, T.D. Snakes, they ain't got nothing on Ike. <laughs> no. Nothing. Nothing. Ike had this massive old theater in New York, and the ceilings was painted with 24 karat gold. Yeah. He had a customized gold throne for a pulpit chair. That's right. He wore a process like Little Richard, and he wore his mustache thin like Little Richard, and his theme was, you can't lose with the stuff I use. That's right. He would say, there is no pie in the sky. That's right. He said, if you want money, I can give you real luck. Now, think oh, of yes. this. Oh, yes. Ike came from under the church of our Lord Jesus Christ of the apostolic faith. My Lord. Ike was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and his bishop was the same bishop that was overseeing Elder Johnson or Bishop Johnson at that time. Lord. Ike know about water and spirit. My Lord. But his love for money love made him money. turn his back on every Bible principle that God had. That's right. That's right. TD Snakes. That's right. Same thing. Same thing. Came from out of the apostolic church, mm -hmm. baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, believing in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, believe about living holy. But what did he decide to preach? Good feeling messages. Good feelings. Motivational speaker. That's right. Not Jesus is, not Jesus is coming. No. Not you have to stop your sinning. Not the end of all things is at hand. No. The Bible is so true. The love of money it's is the root or the source of all, all evil. All evil. While some have coveted after they have erred from the faith and have yes, pierced yes, themselves through with many sorrows. Many sorrows. Then Paul advised his son in the but gospel. Thou, o man of but God, thou, O man of God, flee these things. Did you hear this? In 1 Timothy 6 and verse 11. Thou, O man of God, flee these things. What shall we follow? And follow after righteousness. Follow what's right. Godliness. Godliness. Faith. Belief. Love. Love. Patience. Patience. Meekness. Meekness. Fight. Fight. The good fight, fight of good faith. Fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life whereunto. Thou art also called. What did we profess? And has professed a good profession. Before who? Before many witnesses. Right. Go back to the flock. Is everybody all right? Back in Ezekiel 34 and verse 8. Yes. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey. Became a prey. And my flock became meat to every beast my of the field. My flock became meat. Meat. To every beast of the field. Because there was no shepherd. Mm. What? Because there was no shepherd. No one to protect the people. That's I'm right. I'm going to protect God's people. That's right. That's right. Right. I don't care who get offended. <laughs> I don't care who get deterred. Yeah. I don't care who be aggravated. That's right. I am going to protect God's people with God's word and don't That's care right. who don't like it. Amen. I want to encourage all the ministers. Protect God's Protect. people. That's right. That's right. And in order to protect them, you must stay oh, yes. within the scriptures. Oh, yes. Stay there. Stay Never there. come out. Stay right there. Every message must come from the scriptures. Yeah. When you get to the middle, it's in the scriptures. When you get to the end, you end up with the scriptures. That's right. 
Are you listening? And my flock became meat to every beast of the and field. And you got people with all these different backgrounds fighting all type of demons, trying to get all kind right. of monkeys off their back. The folks that have had a hard, sinful life need a gospel to get that demon off their back. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. Amen. Though we take God, the word of God says what? And my flock became meat to every beast of the field. My flock became meat to every beast of the field. Because there was no shepherd. There was no leader. Neither did my shepherd search for my flock. Neither did the shepherd search for the flock. He's not out trying to gain no souls. But the shepherds fed themselves and fed. Lazy. Lazy. That's right. That's right. Lazy. Amen. We're not going around the world just to say we've been there. No. Amen. When I travel different places, like I often say, brothers, get on my case. Oh, come on, Pastor Jim, won't you, you know, we're going to take the train and go somewhere. I'm like, no. <laughs> That's right. We was in uh, England, I believe it was. That's right. And some of the saints was going to take the train and go to Paris. <laughs> And Huey said, hey man, look, look, we're going to Paris, man. I said, so what? <laughs> he said, won't you get out of this room? Go to Paris. I'm, oh, you know, take, see the picture, see the Eiffel Tower. I said, listen, <laughs> today I want to go to Paris to see a large antenna. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, if you want to, go ahead. Now, if my wife was with me and wanted to go, I'll go. Right. I'll go. <laughs> I'll go there. And even then, she's going to have to pull me by the hand. <laughs> I'm going to be walking down the street. Because <laughs> you know I don't want to go nowhere. When you've been traveling consistently for 40 years, 40 years. you love to be home. <laughs> That's true. That's true. When I was in Italy, Preaching the word of God. Brothers came to me that night. Look, pastor, we're going to Rome. Man, we're going to the Colosseum, you know. Huey said, we're going to make the Bible come alive. <laughs> I said, you going to Rome? He said, yeah, man, we got, all we got to do is catch a train or drive, whatever they was going to do, but they was going to Rome, Italy. He was so excited. He said, pastor, he even tried to throw Bible on me. Paul <laughs> preach in Rome. <laughs> He said, you got the book of Romans, for goodness sake. I said, Huey, I don't want to go to Rome. I said, you want to go to Rome? You go to Rome and take all the pictures you want. Amen. See, folks don't get it. I've been traveling the world consistently, consistently. for 40 years. That's right. 40 That's right. years going through all these time zones. Oh, yes. Getting mm. sick. Preaching when my body's supposed to be on sleep time. That's right. Going two and three days without sleep and preaching because my body cannot adapt to the times. Amen. I was in India. I believe the last time I was in India. Uh, Brother Ray was there. <laughs> Were you there? No. No, Williams wasn't there. Huey was there. Bishop Ferguson was there, and I think some other brothers. You know, India is hot, 105, 6, 78, 9, 10 need be. And the humidity is about the same. So we had service in the day in about 108 degree weather. Mm. And I certainly didn't have no suit on. And I was still hot. Mm. I was exhausted. I was drained. When they turned the service into my hands, I stood up. I probably was in the message maybe about four or five minutes. I fell unconscious before I hit the floor. My Lord. And I didn't know it. I was talking, and then all of a sudden, I would just stand. Later on, I looked at the video, the video you would never see. 
And I showed it to my wife and my daughter. My daughter said, oh, I can't watch this. I can't watch this. But I was standing there. I, did, I, I went out. I was blank between the heat and exhaustion. I, and I looked back at the video. I was standing there rocking back and forth. Yes. Minister James, my interpreter, I heard nothing he said. He said, I knew something was wrong because I was talking to you in your ear and I had no response. He said, you were just standing there rocking back and forth. Lord. Then I fell out and collapsed out of exhaustion of traveling and heat. Mm. I never felt the floor because Minister James saw what state I was in. So therefore, when I automatically went down, he caught me. He caught my body and laid me on the floor. Now, I never collapsed in my life. I was only out for about a few seconds. But you know the strangest thing? It felt like I was asleep for hours. Mm. So I had to laugh because when I woke, came to, I was, in, I was out maybe about a good minute or a few seconds. But when I came to, oh, you know, the Indian brothers, they had on white shirt and white pants. When I came to, <laughs> I, listen, I thought I was having a dream. <laughs> <laughs> because all I saw was hundreds of men coming to me dressing all white Mr. and I'm laying on the floor like this. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what was happening. I had no idea what was happening. Then when I came to, they gave me some water. The brothers helped me up, set me in the chair, and the sun was beaming. Mm. They wouldn't let me walk to the Jeep. They actually drove the Jeep up on the grounds, up to the pulpit, yeah. and helped me in the Jeep, and took me back to the hotel. Mm. I had exhaustion, almost a heat stroke, yeah. and was bitten by mosquitoes and came down with malaria. Lord. My Lord, my but Lord. a few days later, still with that exhaustion and sickness, we came back and determined to preach again. <laughs> so people, I can identify with what Brother Mars is saying about sickness. One of the disadvantages of traveling, if you're a particular eater like I am, you don't eat everything. Yeah. Your body can't, you just can't adapt to everything. Yeah. So I don't offend the culture that I'm among and may try to because I don't want to offend them. I'm not going somewhere to offend anybody. anybody. I'm going to save you. Yeah. So That's many right. times I will come as you to gain, you, gain you, like the Apostle Paul declared. That's right. That's right. When God opened up the door for you to preach the gospel around the world, oh, yes. the experiences that you would encounter, you will have a better appreciation for the truth of the gospel. That's right. Go back to Ezekiel. Back in Ezekiel 34, now we're at verse 9. Everybody all right? Yeah. Listen good. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. O ye shepherds, hear God's word. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds. I am against the shepherds. And I will require my flock at their hand. Yes. And cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall I will cause them to, to cease stop preaching. From feeding the flock. Imagine God stopped you. That's right. He's so tired of you. He's so sick of you. He stopped you. And when he chooses to stop you, who knows yes. how you're going to be stopped? That's right. That's right. He may kill you. Oh, yes. Smite you. Smite you. 
put you on your bed for life and never allow you to get up. That's right. The Lord is talking here, world. Thus saith the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord, not Geno Jennings. The, thus saith the Lord God. The Lord God. Behold, I am against the shepherds. I am against the shepherds. And I will require my flock at their hands. I hand. will require my flock at their hands. And cause them to cease from feeding the flock. I'm going to make them stop. I'm going to stop them. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves in, anymore. Look at it. I'm not only going to stop them from feeding the people, right. I'm going to stop them for fee from feeding themselves. themselves. Anymore. Anymore. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth. Amen. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, yes. God said to the prophet, For I will deliver they, have, they shall hear a word behind them, behind them. saying, this, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Walk ye in it. Walk ye in it. If the flock will be delivered Go ahead. from the shepherds That's right. that are doing this, God is sparing the souls of the flock and honoring the sincere ones. That's right. Leading them to green pasture. Green pastures. That's right. Leading Hallelujah. them to the straight path. I will feed them in a good pasture. The Bible says what? In Ezekiel 34 and verse 14. Oh, and what? I will feed them. I will feed them. In a good pasture. In a good pasture. And upon the high mountains and of Israel. And upon the high mountains. Of Israel. Of Israel. Shall their fold be. Shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold. They're going to lie in Amen. a good fold. And in a fat pasture. This is a good fold. Okay, hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a fat pasture. Hallelujah. 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 God church is a good foe. A good foe. It's a good Hallelujah. pasture. Good pasture. Fat pasture. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, let the God Hallelujah. glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your pasture, Hallelujah. your fold is no good. No good. The only way the grass is green. Yes. Only the word of right. God is preached with truth. That's right. That's right. Otherwise than that, if anything contradict what Jesus said to his apostles, to apostles. anything, anything, right. anything contradict what Jesus said to his apostles. That's right. I don't care how small you think it is, oh, yes. how insignificant you think it is. Oh, yes. If Jesus said you got to obey. That's right. That's right. Keep that pasture green. That's right. Keep it green. That's right. Wonderful. Lord, thank God when you keep it green, Hallelujah. God Almighty is smiling on that pasture. Yes, he is. Glory to God. Glory to God. There shall they lie in a good fold. And what? And in a fat pasture. In a fat pasture. Shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. Shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock. Oh. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The hit. I will feed Do my you flock. see the determination. Hallelujah. Now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Consider this. Hallelujah. You got a natural flock, Israel. Yes. And you got the spiritual flock, Israel. That's right. Jesus said, other oh, sheep that I have. That's right. That is not of not this of fold. This fold. Them will I bring in also. also. Them are the Gentiles. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. He made Jew and Gentile yes. one. One. Them that come from Abraham loins according to the flesh. Yes. And them that is of Abraham's seed by faith. That's right. By believing in the God of Abraham. I will feed my flock. Oh. I will feed my flock. God don't care what he got to do to you to get his word over. That's right. He said, I will, I will feed my flock. He's going to show you who's boss. That, that's right. That's right. Hallelujah. He's going to burn down your Rolls Royce that you robbed the people out of. That's right. 
He going to burn down your mansion that you robbed the people out of. That's right. He going to drain your bank account that you robbed the people out of. Amen. God said, I will. I will feed my I'll flock. I'll do it to God. That's right. I will. I will feed my flock. I will feed my flock. And I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. You want a mansion? Hallelujah. Get a job and go to work and buy it. That's right. You want a Bentley or a Rose? That's right. That's your business. That's your business. Then you go to work and go buy it. That's right. Don't fleece the people. That's right. And tell them the Lord told you to do this for me. Yeah. Them are lies. They're lies. They're lies. People, you got a pastor that tell you that he's fleecing you. He's fleecing you. That's he's right. fleecing you. Oh, yes. You know, you really got to think people's kind of slow. <laughs> That's right. To think that God leads men to do this. That's right. For a man to get up like Creflo O'Dollar and tell a bold-faced lie, the Lord said. The Lord said so. That I need a new jet. Amen. The Lord. Amen. And you can get $65 million? That's right. That's right. Amen. People are so gullible. Oh, yes. And what makes them gullible is the ignorance of the scriptures. Yes. And they hate me because I'm removing all excuses. That's right. For being ignorant right. by bringing you the scriptures. That's right. Thank God you're not going to be ignorant now. No, no. You're going to stand before the judgment seat of God and you will not be able to tell your judge, I did not know. That's right. All you got to do is hear it once yes. and God said through his apostles, yes. consider what I say. What I say. And the Lord, and give the the Lord will give you the understanding. In all things. Of all things. I will feed my flock. Oh, I'm going to feed my flock. Hallelujah. And I will cause them to lie down. And I will cause them to lie down. Saith the Lord saith God. Saith the Lord God. What you mean cause them to lay down? You know, when you fool from eating, <laughs> fool. you get the itises. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You, even, you, even while you're driving, Amen. you got to stay alert. When the Amen. sheep done ate and got fat, got fat, even the sheep get sleepy. Oh, yes. When you feed and eat and digest the riches of the word of God. That's right. Lie down means God right. will give you comfort. That's right. That's right. Because oh. the comforter will come. Will come. And the comforter have came. That's right. And we have the comforter. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Are you listening? Hallelujah. Come on, son. I will seek that which was lost. This is a warning. That's right. To every man in the world that minister, this right. is a warning. Oh, ye shepherds, hear the word the of the Lord. The shepherd of all shepherds is talking to the universe. That's right. Hallelujah. I'm warning you. That's right. Hallelujah. I don't, mm. listen. God, I will, mm -hmm. God ain't flattered about nobody's title. No. And he ain't wild about even those he used. That's right. It is his will That's right. that stand first and foremost. Oh, yes. His will is not going to come to us oh, no. or come down to us. We have to come up to it. That's right. Listen. I will feed my flock and I will cause them to lie down, saith, yes. saith the Lord God. Yes. I will seek that which was lost mm -hmm. and bring again that which was driven away and will bind up that which was broken. You see, a lot of things preachers have driven of yours away. Oh, yes. There have been preachers who taught the people that you're not allowed to own nothing but him. Mm. He should be the one to own everything. My Lord. He tell you you shouldn't have a car better than his. Lord have mercy. He tell you your house should not be bigger than his unless, if it is, you in pride. Mm-hmm. You should not wear a suit more expensive than his, or if you do, you're full of pride. Right. Where do you preachers get this sick teaching from? Where? 
Where? They are pulpit predators. That's right. That's right. If you want to start a business and talk it over to your bishop, many of them will shoot the idea down. No, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Yeah. You don't want to do that. They go as far as lying. The yeah. Lord told me you shouldn't do it. Oh, shut up. <laughs> That's right. That's right. If your business you want to pursue don't violate the Bible, why not encourage me, Bishop? That's right. That's right. Why not encourage me? Why not? With my business, I can be a help to better the work of the Lord. That's true. That's right. So a lot of these preachers, the advice they give you don't have nothing to do with Bible. No. It's their own personal their own. agenda. Oh, yes. They feel as though you're outdoing them or will outdo them. That's right. That's the way the preacher was that I came from under. Yes. You better not buy a car that he even think is more <laughs> expensive than his. Amen. Remember back in the 80s, they came out with the Buick diesel? Mm -hmm. I remember one of the brothers, Ted Freeman, we called him Sit Night. Mm -hmm. Brand new Buick, four door sedan, dark brown, tan top, tan interior. Yeah. Well, Hinton was a Cadillac man, mm -hmm. the Fleetwood Brome. He had about four or five of them. Yep. All Sit Night had was one. one. He drove up to the church. <laughs> parked it in front of the church we sitting there on Thursday night church night Hinton says uh, I saw Buick out there <laughs> he said it's a new Buick and uh, I want to know does it belong to anybody in here, oh, Brother Freeman was glad that the Lord blessed him with it. Mm -hmm. He raised his hand up. He said, that's my, that's my car, uh, uh, Bishop, that's my car. I mean, the Lord blessed me with it, and yeah. I'm happy to get it. <laughs> Hinton said, you could have done better than that. <laughs> he said, now, <laughs> the car you had, he said, I had a Buick maybe back in the 50s and 60s. He said, your Buick has no value. <laughs> he said, now, I sit behind the wheel of your Buick. <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll have value. He said, but when you sitting there, people will drive by, they don't even notice you. <laughs> he said, if little brother Hinton stepped in your Buick, he said, your Buick had value. He said, now, I, I drive a Cadillac Brome. Yep. I got about four or five of them. He said, they'll run rings <laughs> around your building. <laughs> the Bible said, rejoice with them that do rejoice. That rejoice. <laughs> See, a preacher like that can't lead nobody in the kingdom of God because he's too busy focusing on what you have. And if you think you're outdoing him, in his mind, he has to compete and outdo you. That's right. So you become a distraction to him. Oh, yes. Think of it. Yes. How can a man lead you to the kingdom of God yeah. if he's distracted by what you have? That's right. That's right. Brother, there's such, I don't, listen, I don't care what you drive. You could drive a Bentley, Ferrari, Rolls, Mercedes. If you drive a horse and replace his teeth with the <laughs> Rolls Royce grill <laughs> and put 22 inch wheels tied to his ankles, God, whatever progress you have in life, yeah. I thank God for your progress. That's right. That's right. My job is to advise you from the book, from the book. how not to drown 
in what you're doing where it becomes your God. That's right. So my job is to teach you balance where you have the business or have the possessions, right. but the possessions or the business never have you. That's right. Keep God first. That's right. Amen. Keep God first. Amen. Well, in the world will I be upset because you got a new car, a new house, a new apartment, a new bike? Right. Thank God for what you have. That's right. Here I got a roof over my head. I, should, I shouldn't be concerned about what you got. No. I'm driving in my car. I should not say to myself, how can he afford that? What business is that of yours? That's right. The Bible says don't be busy body in other people matters. matters. How can anybody afford what is none of your business? That's right. Being busybody is a transgression. A transgression. Because the Lord speaks against it. That's right. For we hear. Listen. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and at verse 11. We hear. For we hear that there are some which, wa which walk among you. There we hear there are some that walk among you. Disorderly. They're disorderly. Working not at all. They don't do nothing at all. But are busy bodies. But they are busy bodies. Now them that are such we command. What? And exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. You see the Bible covers everything? Everything. I got it just as right to preach, much right to preach that right. as I do Acts 38. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Go back to Ezekiel so I can knock off. Everybody all right? Amen. Don't lie now. That's right. Glory to God. Come on, son. Back in Ezekiel 34 and verse 16. All right. I will seek that which was lost. Yes. And bring again that which was driven away. We were blessed of God for him to seek when we were lost. Oh, yes. When God brought us in, he engrafted us into the fold. That's right. Didn't allow us to be cut off in our sins or in false religion. Amen. Saw the sincerity of our soul. Oh, yes. Made the way possible so we could render to him the service that he deserves. That's right. Didn't cut you off when you were snorking, drinking, smoking, oh, yeah. partying, gambling, killing, stealing, That's raping. Right. That's right. He had mercy on you. Had mercy. Thank God he knew he could make something out of you when you didn't know it. That's right. Never forget. Never forget. Never forget. Where God brought you from. Amen. If you do, you will lose focus on where you're going. That's right. Word of God says what? I will seek that which was lost. I will seek that which is lost. And bring again that which was driven away. I will away. bring again what's driven away. And will bind up that which was broken. Yes. And will strengthen that which was sick. Yes. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. Yes. I will feed them with judgment. I'm going to feed them with what? I will feed them with judgment. Hallelujah. The Bible teaches us, Hallelujah. judge ourselves. Yes. Give chapter and verse. Ezekiel chapter 34 and at verse uh, 16. The scripture teaches us, judge ourselves that ye be not judged. Be not judged. When the word of God is preached, please don't waste your energy, your energy and get upset with me. What profit is it? What For, you going to gain? That's right. If anything, you better take the word of God. It's God talking, not me. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 31. So your anger is really at God. Right. But the devil deceive you and make you think you're angry with me. Right. The Bible says. For if we would judge ourselves. Chapter and verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and at verse 31. If we judge ourselves. We should not be judged. If How we do judge we judge ourselves? That's right. When we hear the word of God, we judge ourselves by the message that is preached. Right. Including the one that preached it. That's right. He judged himself by the scriptures. That's right. Acts 38, let me close. Then Peter said unto them, repent. 
Now judge yourself, sinner. Amen. So you can escape the judgment of God that's coming. That's right. Get me. Repent for your evilness. Repent. Send for life that you live. Amen. God says, repent, be sorrow. Godless sorrow worketh repentance unto life. Be That's sorry right. about your sins. That's right. Repent. Repent and be baptized. And be baptized. Every one of you. This is what it means when God told Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Amen. except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That's right. When you're born of the water, you're baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. When you're born of the spirit, you're filled with the spirit, which is the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Amen. That the spirit of God give utterance. It made me feel good when they told me how the Holy Ghost fell in here last night and several people got it, Amen. received it. What, what was that? That was some more lively stones. More lively stones. Laced in the building. That's right. Repent. Repent and be baptized. And be baptized. Every one of every you. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. For the removing of your sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Anybody want to obey the word of God and be baptized in water? In the name of Jesus Christ. Stand on your feet. Wonderful. Wonderful. Follow that gentleman right there. Follow that gentleman right there. That young man in back of you, brother. You want to be baptized? Follow, follow that gentleman right there. If there's any sisters, you follow them. All right, who gave me the correct time? Oh, Lord, 317. My God, I didn't know that lady. <laughs> oh, glory to God. <laughs> All right, I know we're scheduled to start at 5, but we'll start at 5.30. Give you some extra time to eat. And take your time and fellowship with each other. Amen. Amen. Remember what we said earlier during the convention. Meet and greet each other. Amen. All right. We'll be at 5.30 back here again. Let us all stand. And... strengthen the man of God according to your will. Be with us and help us, the ministers, Lord God, to take heed to the Holy Scriptures and what is being taught. Lord, we thank and praise you. We ask this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Peace be unto you.